Hello everyone, this is Devdad Dharyal yet again from Talent Connected Worldwide Immigrations. I'm sure you have seen part one of this series, which is basically about the details and the overview of the 67 point calculation. It also gives you the various heads and factors under which the calculation is done. In this video, we will basically go ahead and discuss uh, the uh, point breakup under each and every factor and the head uh, that we discussed in the previous uh, chapter. Uh, and we will also do a practical demo of how this calculation is done. We'll also give you links in the description of this video uh, and you can go ahead and do the calculation on your own. So now we will have a quick run through the various uh, factors and the heads and the breakup of points under each one of these factors. We will start off, I will be sharing my screen uh, and you can see as I go through this uh, deck and uh, uh, it should not be a challenge to understand all these. I will try to go in slight detail, which should really help you understand uh, what it is all about. So we'll start off with the total uh, initial breakup and which is, uh, you know, the, uh, the six factors. The first one being age for which you have a maximum of 12 points. As you can see uh, in this screen right now, and I'll put it uh, on a highlighter as well. Uh, then uh, we have education, which is 25 points. Then we have work experience at 15 points. Uh, language skills, which is both English and French at 28 points, 24 plus 4. We will again see the breakup in detail. And uh, then we have uh, arranged employment for which you get 10 points. And finally, we have adaptability and, and there are various criteria under which uh, under this head uh, and you can score a maximum of 10 points, which constitutes the total 100 points uh, uh, in this uh, eligibility calculation. Now we'll go to each and every factor and see how you are scoring those maximum points or if you don't score the maximum points, how much do you score? And let's do a quick round of calculation around that. So the first factor is age. In the age, you score a maximum of 12 points. Bara points are maximum to calculate. You don't get any points for less than 18 years of age. And you don't get any points for 47 years of age and above. So below 18 and above 47. So this is something which is very important to understand. The reason for this uh, no points uh, being given is the contribution in terms of economic life. Uh, if you have 47 years uh, of age when you come to Canada uh, and uh, you will retire at 60, your contribution of uh, economic contribution is only for 13 years or so. And, uh, and basically, uh, uh, you, uh, you would be taken care of by the Canadian government for a much longer time and you will be a liability, uh, a bigger liability, you know, as age grows, medical needs and other uh, benefits and factors do influence this. Uh, under 18, why we don't have points is because obviously you don't have professional education and uh, you know the relevant experience needed to come as a skilled worker. That is why. And otherwise, if you see the point grid here, uh, you basically would see that you know the maximum points are uh, for age group of 18 to 35, which is you know you would have completed your education, you would have gathered enough uh, you know uh, work uh, work experience and knowledge to do a skill job in Canada. And again, if you would have been married, your spouse would also be ready to join the workforce here or be an economic contributor here in Canada. Then with every single age after 35, every single year of age growing, you lose one point each. So uh, the 12 points become 11 at 36 and at 37 it becomes 10 and so on and so forth. And at 47, it becomes zero. This is how the math for the points uh, for each is. Next uh, factor is education. The maximum you, you score in education is uh, 25 points. And if you see my screen right now, you know, it, it basically says that, you know, you should have done either education in Canada, uh, which will get you points. And in case you have not, then uh, your education, which is outside of Canada, must be uh, evaluated through a process for called education credential assessment. Uh, this process uh, basically uh, is done from various, uh, you know, certified organizations, uh, you know, and uh, five for general and two 
uh, for specialized and uh, you know we'll discuss that in a different section altogether but uh, it, it is uh, very important to get this evaluation done and on the basis of that evaluation report that comes out you are given a score uh, and you know what what is this score you know we quick, quickly in a nutshell if we see for for doctoral level for doctoral level you score 25 points uh, which is phd uh, and uh, you need a, a bachelor's degree or something equivalent you know uh, to score 21 points uh, under this and then you have you know for uh, two uh, postgraduate uh, degrees you know you you score 22 points and 23 points if you have a professional degree or a master's degree uh, so this is how you know you can just quickly assess if you have done your education through an authorized uh, you know educational institution uh, recognized uh, by the government then uh, you should be able to score the relevant points obviously uh, you know it is subject to the education credential assessment report the next section is the work experience uh, the work experience gives you a maximum of 15 points. Uh, again, you need a minimum of one year of continuous work experience. In NOC codes O, A and B, which basically certifies skilled uh, jobs. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, how do you define uh, a working year? You know, the simple calculation or the math behind is it, it is that, you know, you should have done 30 years, 30 hours, sorry, 30 hours minimum uh, in a week. For a continuous period of one year obviously you could have changed employment but there should be no gap whatsoever again you know, there are some things here and there which have to be taken care of but in a nutshell if you've completed one year you are eligible and you score a minimum of nine points there and you can score a maximum of 15 points if you have six or more years of uh, work experience then you have uh, you know uh, two to three uh, years you score 11 points and 13 points for four to five years so you know again uh, 15 points can be scored if you have six plus years of experience uh, usually by age 27 you have six years of experience after your qualification next comes language skills language skills can uh, get you uh, 28 points again how do you uh, how do you get points in language skills you have to give an exam uh, and there are many exams you know you can write IELTS you can write uh, self -it. And then you have you can write you know TEF or other for French exams. Only two languages can get you points. Uh, you you get 24 points. Uh, you know uh, if you score the top uh, you know top notch uh, uh, you know CLB level uh, you know in your in your language ability in English. And then you can also get uh, you know four additional points for French. Again the minimum requirement is that you should be able to score a CLB 7 which means in IELTS it is six in each band reading writing speaking and listening uh, and uh, you know uh, if you don't get that you you are not eligible that's it you need to score this six in each uh, it's called CLB 7 so you score 24 points maximum for the primary language and four points for additional for uh, usually French. The next section is arranged employment. Under arranged employment, you get a maximum of 10 points. Now, one of the requirements for arranged employment uh, is that, you know, you need to have the job from a Canadian employer, right? Uh, it should have been received before coming to Canada. And finally, it cannot be a seasonal job. It should be a minimum of one year that you should have uh, the job for. Uh, so, uh, so you know, this is a very uh, important things to be kept in mind. The NOC code has to be O, A and B. So, what the government is trying to do here is, you know, to ensure that, you know, any Tom, Dick and Harry doesn't give you a job just like that and you claim points on the basis of that. It has to be under all these norms, right? Uh, and then, obviously, there will be several other processings like LMIA, LMI exempt and um, NAFTA and other, other factors, you know, which have to be kept in mind when you ensure that, you know, you have... Uh, you, you are uh, capable or uh, you are eligible to score points in arranged employment, right? So the next uh, factor is adaptability under which you can score a maximum of 10 points. Uh, now, uh, if you if you look at the screen right now, you can easily see that, you know, there are, there are 40 points total that, that are available here. But the maximum, even if you are eligible, that you can score is only 10. So what are these factors? You know, if you... Uh, or your spouse uh, basically got a CL before. So, you know, we always recommend that, you know, your spouse or your partner does give the IELTS exam no matter how bad because getting a CL before is an easy peasy job. 
right? So they should write IELTS and secure these five points and help you become eligible, uh, right? That is one thing. And in case you or your spouse had education in Canada, you get some five points for that. Then 10 points in case you had a one year work experience in the OAB uh, uh, skilled category, not category, you get 10 points uh, for that. And if your spouse had work experience in the OAB category or a work permit, valid work permit, then again, you score five points for that. Then if you have arranged employment, you get another five points here in this adaptability. And if you have relatives in Canada, you get five points. So very important to understand uh, who is a relative, con her relative, you know, it cannot be anyone. Relative is a person who is, uh, you know, uh, either you or your spouse's side, you know, or, on, or, and is a blood relative. You know? It cannot be some uncle or some aunt here or there. It has to be a blood relative on either side. So these are all the factors. Uh, and now what we will do is we'll quickly run through and complete a demo uh, of how to check your eligibility. Uh, it is very interesting. The link for checking your eligibility is provided in the description. I highly recommend that you do it yourself. We will do a very brief preview of uh, the, uh, uh, the demo uh, and you can check your permutation and combinations, your exact criteria, uh, and you can fill it in. I'll give you some you know, tips uh, where you, know, you could go wrong and you, know, you can use those tips to do it all by yourself. So now uh, we'll quickly go through uh, the link uh, that we have provided in the description. This is a Government of Canada website, uh, canada.ca. And uh, you need to go to the bottom part of this page and click the button Check Eligibility. And then it starts the questionnaire. It's a simple questions you will ask you. And you will answers to answer them. You will not talk about points. Even at the end, you know, you will not be given a score. We all talk about a 67 point score, but it is only going to give you whether you are eligible or not. A simple answer in a, in a simple straight one line statement. So please remember that, uh, you know, uh, the points are just, uh, the grid is just for us to have an understanding, but the final calculator on the government website only tells you whether you're eligible or not. And we will just do a quick breeze through that with very simple options and some tips to help you not commit a mistake, right? So uh, the first question is, which province do you want to go to? If you are not uh, aware, uh, you can choose any one of them. But, you know, usually people go to the province called Ontario. Hum Ontario choose karte. We go next. The next question is, did you give the language ability test? And if yes, which one? Which exam you have given language? Ke liye? So, Quickly, we choose kar lete IELTS. 90% people choose IELTS. So, you know, we'll choose that. Although self is catching up. But... And then it says the year, because we all are aware IELTS is, or language ability scores are valid only for two years. So, it will just try to assess whether your score is uh, eligible or not. Uh, I'll just choose a random date called 22nd. Uh, uh, 2022 January 1 uh, and now it is going to ask me what scores did I get in that exam I'll say you know I I got a CL uh, 8.5 in uh, speaking 8 in listening uh, 7.5 in reading and a 7 in writing let us go ahead hit the next button right i'm doing it uh, and you probably have uh, uh, will be seeing my screen it will really help you to uh, do it all by yourself just by looking at it it is very simple straightforward the next one is do you have any other language tests it's basically asking you did you give french or other exams uh, and we would just say none let's make it simple and if you have given french please go ahead and select and give your scores and your dates for your french exam as well we're just going to give it a skip next and then it says uh, uh, in the last three years how many years of skilled work experience do you have in canada guys remember that you know many people just choose it here and put i have five years of experience but do you have the experience in canada if you don't have experience in canada choose none 
right? So very important because it is going to give you points for Canadian work experience. So if you don't have, then put none. And uh, again, uh, it will ask you what skill level did you have the work experience in Canada in OAB. Uh, so because we don't have any work experience, you're choosing as none. I'll choose this also as none of the above because uh, it does not apply to me. This part, this uh, next question. So go to next. Then uh, comes how many uh, in the last ten years? How many years of experience do you have? You know, it, it is it and it has to be uh, you know uh, continuous, full time, and paid. Very important. And obviously, you know, when we are saying all this, it, it should be uh, under the OAB category. Right. So let's say four to five or probably six years and more. Let's take the maximum points here. OK, as let, let's have a simple going. And then there is another question added in the last five years. Do you have at least one, uh, at least two years of work experience in one of these knock quotes? You know, these are trades. Uh, so if you have any experience, again, it is going to decide whether, you know, you are fit into the trade program or into the, uh, you know, uh, uh, into the uh, uh, skill program. So again, these are all trades. If the knock quote starts with 72, 73, 82, 92, 632 or 633. Uh, chefs, butchers, processing uh, people and, uh, you know, maintenance supervisors and industrial people. Right. Again, you would say none. We don't have. We are skilled uh, immigrants or we are trying for the skilled immigration program. Right. Let's click next. The next question is how much money in Canadian dollars will you give, will you bring to Canada? Now, again, you know, there is a funds requirement, which is very important to be met. You need to, uh, you know, carry along with you. There is a grid specifically, you know, we'll talk about that in future videos. But then, you know, you can easily find out what is the funds requirement. You need to carry and, you know, X number of funds uh, per applicant. And, uh, you know, if you're a family of one, uh, if you're just going single, then, uh, you know, you need to carry probably 8,000 Canadian dollars if you are Two people, probably ten thousand Canadian dollars. I'm just giving an uh, approximate number. Uh, you have to get the exact numbers from the government website. Then, if you have, uh, you know, uh, three or more, there is a specific amount for every single, uh, you know, person who gets added. Now, if, I'll just choose, you know, probably, uh, you know, sixteen to twenty thousand uh, dollars. Obviously, you know, this has to be the right figure. If you don't have that money. And if you cannot prove that this money belongs to you, then, you know, you could again face a rejection based on, uh, you know, funds unavailability, right? And how many family members do you have? I would just say one because, you know, I want to finish this questionnaire quickly because if you say two, uh, you know, you have to provide details for others. So I'll just, you know, give it a miss here. This funds requirement obviously is proportionate to the number of people you are uh, taking along with you, you know, as dependents. Uh, do you have a valid job offer in Canada? I would say no, but if you if you choose yes, then you have to give details of that as well. I just give it a skip here. Next, now it is asking you uh, for you know your date of birth. Uh, I would again choose you know 1994 month January date zero one. Right, uh, I'll just put some random date here. You know. Uh, to again get decent points for age uh, so with this uh, you know uh, you have probably uh, 26 years of age at this point of time you would score the maximum uh, score for age uh, and then uh, uh, the next question is if you did not earn a Canadian degree diploma or certificate you may need to have your foreign education assessed obviously it's talking about the ECA and then it is saying uh, you know uh, they must show that it is valid and equal to a completed Canadian credential. Now it is asking what does it equate to and that's what I was saying, you know, in the previous section that, you know, uh, uh, that education credential assessment process must be completed for any foreign education. And this is where the report comes out, you know, it gives you what it is equivalent to. So I would say I'm just, you know, a very basic bachelor's degree holder, three years bachelor's program. I've chosen that, you know, if, if something else applies to you or doctoral degree, PhD, masters or something, Choose that, right? We'll go next. And then uh, I think it just uh, pushed me out. I'll just put the date uh, uh, once again. Bachelors. Yep. 
So now it is asking me adaptability questions, you know, which we saw in the adaptability thing. And it is asking me if I have full time, uh, uh, you know, uh, education in Canada for two or more years. Uh, if I have at least two years of full time work experience uh, under OAB uh, NOX. And if uh, I have a relative in Canada and uh, 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 for me or my spouse and, you know, obviously because I've chosen single, so it's not asking me for my spouse. So, so all in all, it is uh, these are three questions. I will say none of the above. I don't have any of those. I just hit next. And it is asking me for a marital status. I'm just going to say I am never married single. Finished. And if you see the highlighted section here, it says based on your answers, you appear to be eligible for express entry. And then uh, to apply online, you will need this personal reference number. It has generated a personal reference number, you know, which I will further use in my application for creating express entry. Uh, so this is what the 67 point calculation is all about, friends. And uh, you can do it all by yourself. No rocket science. Easy peasy process. Uh, I would say do it yourself. Put in your details. And if you need any help assistance, you know, please get in touch with us. We will be more than happy to help you. I'm sure you liked uh, the part two of this series where we gave you a demo, a detailed demo and gave you the factors and the point breakup under each and every factor. Please stay tuned for our last video in this series where we will give you the differences uh, between the eligibility calculation and the CRS calculation. We will also give you some bonus tips. So please stay tuned. Please subscribe. Thank you so much.